Quarantine! The day is saved. And I'm making quarantine decisions at this moment. I spent a lot of money on this video. Please buy my merch. Look, the table's all nice and sealed now because we're we're gonna, having danger. There's gonna be juice everywhere. Come on, do it! Fruit! Fruit me up! The strawberries all over the floor now. What is a can? Fruit! Berries were introduced in Generation 2, but at the time, they were just regular items, sort of precursors to the other items. Basically, the items like potions and elixirs and even old pokeballs were made partially with berries. But in the very next generation, all of the original berries would go away, and for good reason. They had such amazing names like Berry, Goldberry, Mystery Berry, Bitterberry, and more. And since those berries were retconned, we're not going to go over them. But in Generation 3, they introduced a wide variety of effects. But why are the effects that they have what they are? What are all of these berries even based on? Well, that is the topic of today's video. So to keep things flowing, let's go over the berries categorically. Berries have various effects, so basing our categories on some of those seems easy enough. We'll start with the berries that cure a status condition, as they always seem to the most useful to me, and also the berry dex starts this way. The cherry berry is clearly a cherry. It's the smallest berry, and also the first berry numerically. It is described as spicy and heals paralysis. Spicy? Oh, wait. Okay. Cherries, in and of themselves, are really spicy. They are sweet, like most fruit. However, it's a flavor that goes well with spice. Spiced cherries and spicy cherry flavored things are common enough. Have you ever had Mr. Pib? It's a spicy cherry soda. And black cherry cola is often considered a spicy cherry flavor as well. Cherries aren't in season right now, so I had to get the dried kind. The kind that they drown in sugar. <sighs> so I guess in the Pokemon world, cherry berries are naturally spiced. Okay, clever. Good way to differentiate it. But why does it cure paralysis? Well, because as long as it's a mild case of it, cherries can actually help with that if you eat enough of them. Cherries will remove excess body acids and help with blood stagnation, and thus, when eaten regularly, are therapeutic for things like gout, paralysis, numbness in the extremities, and rheumatic pain in the lower half of the bodies. Black cherries specifically help prevent plaque both in the teeth and in the brain, as black cherry juice is currently being researched as an additional means to help with Alzheimer's symptoms, which are most likely caused by brain plaque. And along with Alzheimer's, usually such patients have similar issues with paralysis-like things due to brain neurological nerve stuff. So that's neat. Cherries actually help with paralysis a bit. The Chesto Berry is interesting in that its name refers to a chestnut in just about every language, except for Chinese and Japanese, the language that Pokemon is in originally, in which they refer to the Mukago Yam, which interestingly enough grow above ground, unlike most yams. Uh, and this is not one of those yams. They don't sell them here. They're East Asian thing. But at least those Asian yams look similar to chestnuts, so I guess that's why they changed them in the West. Hmm. Chestnut! Is that still not the part you eat? Chestnuts are hard, yo. <laughs> I understand chestnut entirely now. Yeah, even the complete inside. I've never just had a chestnut before. This is a learning experience. I can't. I guess I'll stick with the yam. It's a day of new experiences. I've never done that before, I swear. Bleh. Chesto berries replaced the Gen 2 mint berries and are described as having a dry, thick skin. But get to its insides and you'll recover from sleep. How most Pokemon eat in the middle of their sleep, I don't know, but okay. But I mean, if it's a chestnut, 
then it wakes them up by being stinking hard, and a lot of chestnuts are also sharp when they're freshly picked. So, you fall over asleep because you got hypnotized or whatever, and then you land on a chestnut, it's painful! <laughs> oh hey, I actually cracked it with that. Why was the other one so hard? In the case of those Far Eastern yams though, it's sort of the opposite. Yams are entirely starchy complex carbohydrates, the digestion of which promotes better sleep. They have plenty of vitamin B6, which helps you create more melatonin, which makes you sleepy. They also have loads of potassium, a muscle relaxant. So yams help you sleep deeper. Maybe the idea is that the Chesto Berry helps speed the sleep up. Like, hey, come on, sleep deeper. Get a snap out of it. And then you wake up because your sleeping is done. Or maybe in the Pokemon world, it, the berry is just the total opposite of the reality. Who knows? Moving on. The Pecha Berry. It is a sweet pink peach. It cures poison. Peaches, do not do that. Don't get bit by a snake and then eat a peach and think you're okay. It, realistically, peaches do the total opposite. And this is really cold because it's frozen. We're only on like the third berry and we're already finding a theme of berries that do the exact opposite of reality. Uh, but, uh, most stone fruit, like apricots, plums, and peaches, have poisonous pits. Don't eat them. It's got amygdalin, which breaks down into hydrogen cyanide, and in high enough doses, is lethal. Now, don't let that scare you away from eating them, though. I mean, the sugar content should do that for you already, but not the cyanide. You need to eat, like, 30 gosh darn peaches just to start having an effect, and that's eating the peaches pit itself, not just the flesh around it, which doesn't really have any. Uh, and I don't think anyone wants to eat that many peach pitch. Pitch. Pits. I guess in the Pokemon world, they're fighting poison with poison, but in the real world, that just leads to more poison, which is kind of lame. The Rostberry. It's hard and bitter and heals burns. Oh, oh wait, okay, I get the name now. Rost is like frost, so it cools the burn. And also it's from Strawberry. See, just move the letters around. Look at it, it's an icy blue strawberry. So what is the deal with the burn heal? Well, did you know that strawberry extract is an ingredient in some sunscreens? Strawberries have anthocyanins, which are known to help block UV rays, helping prevent sunburn. Neat! Hell, I freaking love strawberries. Also, I am relishing in this moment. I haven't had fruit in like a year and a half because I've been doing keto. The ass pear berry. It's an Asian pear with blue rings for some reason. It's sour and very juicy on the inside, but the outside is super hard. And see the name again. Ass pear, Asian pear. Ah, it defrosts frozen Pokemon. Again though, I don't know how a frozen Pokemon can eat. I don't know, but the connection isn't that hard to make. Pear trees can grow in significantly colder climates compared to most other big fruit bearing trees. They have a much higher cold tolerance. The persim berry is a persimmon. I hate persimmons. Persim berries cure confusion. And what do you know? Brain health is considered to be the number one thing that persimmons are good for. Persimmons contain a natural compound called ficitin. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is an antioxidant with several brain benefits. Eating persimmons regularly enhances long-term memory, prevents neuronal dysfunction, and protects against age-related cognitive decline. And it can also help reduce brain damage caused by ischemic strokes, I think is the term. Again, text on screen, because I don't know how to say that word, probably. And it's also a bit of an antidepressant. So yeah, persimmons, good for the brain, helps reduce confusion. The Lumberry is a super hard, super slow growing plum fruit. It cures any status condition and even confusion. So are plums like a god tier fruit? No. I mean, plums are plenty healthy for you. They have loads of antioxidants and are good for bone and heart health. 
But that's not really a cure-all now, is it? I'm sure the berry in Pokemon having this crazy ability is just for game mechanics sake. Though prunes, which are just dried plums, are great for colon health. They can help you pass anything, which may be the idea. It helps you get over or pass your problems along. Eh? I don't know, that's a stretch. It probably just has to do with the fact that the Chinese and Japanese mythological tree of life is a plum tree that is capable of healing all things and even granting immortality. Yeah, it's definitely that. And with that, new category. Berries that heal HP or PP. The Orin Berry. It's an orange! It's an orange! Um. Me oh my, that is the bluest orange I have ever seen. Like at least the Chinese name for this berry specifies that it is a blue orange, but all of the other names are just from orange. It's hard, it's juicy, and it's also all of the flavors except for spicy, and it heals 10 HP. I, I don't even have to like, look, eh. I don't even have to look into this one. When you're sick, eat an orange and drink orange juice because they are full of vitamin C. It helps you heal. Or at least, you know, that's how it's marketed. But uh, the marketing worked, and now we all believe that that's what it's good for. Helps you heal a little bit. 10 HP for eating an orange. <laughs> the citrus berry. Wow, how specific. Citrus. It heals 30 HP, so it's just a better orange berry. And oranges are a citrus fruit. Hmm. Well, the Japanese name of the berry specifies that it is a pomelo, which is one of the largest citrus fruit, and an ancestor of the grapefruit. In fact, it tastes just like one. It's just not as pretty or as fleshy. But same reasoning as the orange berry, just loads of vitamin C. The lepa berry is a crab apple that restores 10 PP to a PP depleted move. It's hard, small, and grows slow. Oh, and lepa is apple backwards, but with the LE switched around. Crab apples have a few varieties, but the term is also sometimes used to mean wild or feral apples, mutts that are out and about rather than farmed. In a way, then, it is the first apple, according to some. And also according to some, the natural sugars found in apples can give you a boost of energy similar to coffee. Crab apples especially, because they are so hard and sour that they just punch you in the mouth. That'll really wake you up for sure. More energy for more moves. Do you like figs? Because I don't. I thought I didn't, because I remembered not. But my tastes have changed. I think I still prefer its cousin though, the Newton. So these next five berries all do the same thing, basically. When the holder's HP falls below 25%, they eat the berry to heal 50%, but if they dislike how it tastes, then they get confused. So you have to know what your Pokemon like and dislike. The figgy berry is spicy. I mean, I guess. Figs are really good for reproductive health, eye health, and most importantly for our purposes here, are high in potassium and vitamin A, and help produce more red and white blood cells. They are great for an immunity boost, helping you heal. Yeah, the wiki berry is a kiwi that's purple for some reason, and it's lumpy, hard, and dry. Three words I would never use to describe a kiwi, but whatever. They are also high in antioxidants, potassium, and vitamin C, so they help with immunity. But, you know, in quotes. But they do have almost twice the vitamin C content that oranges do ounce per ounce. So it is better. The Mago Berry is a mango shaped like a pepper for some reason. And it's not spicy, it's sweet. I guess, I guess mangoes do sort of have this pointy shape to them. Uh, and what do you know? It's vitamin C town again, and boosts immunity thanks to its other nutrients. But interestingly, it also helps reduce cholesterol and aids in weight loss, something that can can't be said of most fruit. Ah! Ah! <laughs> that is such an overripe mango!
Now let's just take the A from the end of guava and put it at the beginning. It's the aguave berry, and again, great for the immune system. It even helps fight cancer, and it reduces menstrual cramping, and also may help with long-term weight loss. And mini tangent, I couldn't find guavas anywhere, but I found guava juice, and oh my word, oh guava juice, it's a stinking YouTube channel that I just remembered and that shouldn't exist, but you know. Significantly more sugar than soda. Oh, but it's juice, so it's fine to gift a little Timmy. And now the Iapa berry. I have no idea why. Oh, I forgot papayas existed. It is just the freaking. Just move the letters. It's a papaya. But wow, again, immunity boosts, menstrual pain helps against cancer. It's, all of the fruit in this category have like the same set of things, which I guess is why they all do basically the same thing in Pokemon too. I swear, did some guy at Game Freak just have like fruit be his favorite thing, a special place in his heart? So we did all this research to make sure that the berries in Pokemon were extremely accurate to reality. Well, at this point, I'm pretty convinced because it's pretty dang close, most of them. But let's continue because we're done with that set of similar berries. I'm not sure if I've had fresh papaya before. Oh, that's really good. New category, Wild Pokemon Relations. Starting with the Razberry. I wonder what that could be. It makes wild Pokemon easier to capture, even though it's a spicy, dry berry? Do wild Pokemon like spicy and dry things? Fun fact though, did you know that if you want to attract significantly more bees to your garden, you should plant a raspberry bush right in the middle of it? They attract all kinds of pollinators from much further away too because they're just so aromatic to them. Just be careful though because they're also known to attract snakes and rats. The Nana Berry is a banana and it's about this big. And it makes wild Pokemon move around less, makes them easier to smack in the face with a Pokeball. But why? Well, firstly, because who doesn't like bananas? They are going to sit down and enjoy it. But also, bananas contain tryptophan, a type of protein that the body converts into serotonin, which is known to make you relax, improve your mood, and generally make you feel happier. It's a mild sedative. No wonder bananas are the most appealing fruit in the world. Oh, banana. Throw a pineapple berry at a wild Pokemon, and they'll be more likely to drop items. <laughs> Probably just because you threw a pineapple at its face, you monster. <laughs> Pineapples are sharp and pokey. They hurt. I would know. I'd drop my items too if it meant getting away from this thing faster. So here's a category. The next six fruit all do the same basic thing. They lower one of your Pokemon's EVs, so their overall stats, but in return, their friendship with you grows. Because that's what friends do, right? They give you a fruit that makes you a little bit weaker. Like, uh, like a tomato. So compared to most fruit, tomatoes aren't all that nutritious, but boy, do they make you a friendlier person to the person that gifted it to you. Right? No, no, please don't tell me that's right. A tomato a day keeps the depression away. A couple of studies found that tomato-rich diets reduce depressive symptoms and can prevent them from getting worse. There's a whole effect named after this, the tomato effect. Basically, it explains the reluctance of the medical community to embrace nutritional approaches for medical conditions. I've experienced it firsthand myself. Oh no, don't you change your diet and cut carbs because you have diabetes and those things literally make it worse and harder for you to manage. Just take more insulin and drugs instead. Visit me more frequently. Pay me. Come on. But I mean, obviously there are loads of conditions that diet alone cannot help with, but a lot more of them can that people don't give them credit for. You're only as healthy as the food you eat. So that was a tangent, but tomatoes. They can help depressive symptoms, which, in a way, can make you more appreciative of a friend giving you gifts, making you friendlier. I never would have thought that from a tomato, right? I've never just been into a tomato before. And I don't think I'll ever do it again. Next berry, the Greppa berry, it does the same thing. It's grapes. Grapes help reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression too. 
Pretty sure all of the berries in this category are gonna do that. The Hondu Berry. It's a honeydew melon. They too boost cognitive health and help prevent mood disorders like depression from worsening. The Qualot Berry. I have no idea what this is. What the heck is a Laquat? It's this fruit, apparently, and it's a mild sedative, making you more calm and happy, and also may relieve diarrhea, and supports a healthy mood to counteract intoxication. The Pomag Berry is a pomegranate. Now, mood tweaking isn't really what pomegranates are really known for. They are primarily all about their ridiculous levels of antioxidants, but they do also have effects on salivary testosterone in addition to balancing effects on blood pressure, both of which can affect mood and help reduce anxiety and work-related stress. They're so cold. And tart and good. Wow. And then there's the kelp sea berry, which is kelp. Why is kelp a berry here? Like, I get that most of the fruit that we've been talking about today aren't actually berries in the world that is real, but at least they are fruit! But kelp! Kelp! Please don't tell me that kelp also does that. It does! Ah! Regularly eating kelp is fantastic for your thyroid thanks to its iodine content. This helps prevent both fatigue and depression, which is great for your mood. So eat kelp. It's a berry now. New category, uh, buffs when hurt. When your Pokemon has their HP drop below 25%, they will eat the berry to raise one of their stats. For example, the Apricot Berry raises special defense and the Ganlon Berry defense. These berries are based on an apricot and a long gun, which I also had never heard of and thus could not find at the store. But both of these fruits are very hard and durable. So, you know, defense. Urgh. And then there's the Salic Berry, which is based on the Salic fruit. Oh, okay, they changed the K to a C. I thought that they finally just straight up called it what it is. It boosts speed. Why? Is it because it's a very smooth and aerodynamic plant fruit thing? And its sugars gives you energy? Oh, it turns out you can make Salic coffee out of it. Coffee without any coffee beans, just Salic instead. Weird. The lychee berry, which is based on the lychee fruit, raises a tech, which I guess works perfectly. The things this fruit benefits the most are your bones and your nails. So in the case of Pokemon, that's teeth and claws for attacking. Nice. Then the Pattaya berry, which raises special attack, is based on the Pitaya, also known as the dragon fruit. It's a pretty mystical looking fruit, like... And dragons are all about magic and breathing fire, so, you know, special attack works out all right. I heard that they're never as sweet as you want them to be. That is right. This just tastes bland. Like, it looks like it's such a sweet, cool, delicious thing, but it... But it's not. Then the Lonsot Berry raises the critical hit rate and is based on the Longsot Paratisicium. This word. Also known as the Dooku Fruit. Now, crit rate is kind of a hard thing to quantify in terms of a fruit, but this fruit does a lot. Its skin is mosquito repellent and also can be used to help with sunburns and controlling cholesterol, diarrhea, and gum health. It's also good for tooth strengthening, which I guess can translate into stronger bite attacks and thus higher crit chance. Uh, but overall, it doesn't really have much, so this is just this is just game mechanics, I guess. Which I'm sure is also the case for the Starf Berry, which is based on the Star Fruit. It raises a random stat, so it all sort of comes down to luck, which stars are a bit of a symbol of. It's all luck and chance that you get to wish upon a shooting star. Stars are... Stars are used in all sorts of luck-based things, and also I've never eaten a star fruit before, so, uh... Do I... Kinda like that? What is...
Well, that's disgusting. Why do people eat these? Like, the flesh on the inside tastes like the banana peel of an extremely green banana. Like, if you just chewed that up. Super juicy, though, but... I hope it's just that it's unripe. The Mickleberry raises the accuracy of the next move when eaten, and also isn't based on an actual fruit. At first I was thinking, oh great, look, it's a pickle, haha, <laughs> how funny, I can make a pickle Rick joke and reach the front page of Reddit, ha. <laughs> but no, uh, looking at the name in other languages, it all just means miracle fruit. It's a miracle, which is just a term sort of given to healthy fruit. It's a miracle fruit. It, cured all my diseases because I live in a fantasy world. Um, but so, uh, it's not really anything to base this off of. I guess there are plenty of fruit that benefit vision and also the brain and hand-eye coordination and all, and I guess that's just sort of the thing that the miracle fruit does. The Kustop Berry is super hard on the outside and soft like custard on the inside. It makes the next move that the Pokemon uses go first, and it's based on the sugar apple or the custard apple, super closely related to the cherimoya. These fruit are all about being anti-inflammatory and great for your blood pressure, on top of having antioxidants, and they also have a stupid amount of sugar, hence the name sugar apple and custard apple, and well, sugar energy gets you hyped up, gets you ready to attack first. I guess. How in the world? I've never... This was the most expensive fruit here today. This was $13. Terrible. I was not expecting this either. What you... Oh, it smells super sweet. And it is super soft like custard. Look at that. Holy... It's just straight sugar. Oh! Soft that you can see my teeth marks. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, the moranga berry is based on the morong, also known as the tirap. It's a close relative of the jackfruit. If the holder gets hit by a special move, it raises their special defense. These fruit are tough and spiky, great for defense, and they also smell incredibly strong and not exactly pleasant. Great for special defense. The key berry does the same, but it's for physical defense, and it's based on the Aki fruit. They too have a very tough outer shell, great for defense. They are also toxic to humans if not prepared right, so I'm not risking it by bringing it into the house. Uh, three categories left. Let's do nothing. It's the nothing category. The blookberry does nothing. Well, that's not very fair to the berries, I suppose. They do things still, just not in battle. They are used to make poffins and poke blocks and things, cooking and what have you. But since they do nothing in battle, there's nothing really to explain about them. They are just generic, non-magical fruit in the Pokemon world, I guess. And they include the Blookberry, which is a blackberry, which I love. The Wepair Berry, which is a Western pear. The Mangost Berry, which is a Mangosteen. The Corn Berry? With two ends? Which is corn? What? It's corn? Like, is it like berry, Captain Crunch? Immediately stuck in the teeth. The Rabuda Berry, which is a Rambutan, which I have never eaten, uh, and I couldn't find anywhere, so I still never get to eat it. Uh, there's the Nommel Berry, which is a lemon, because it's uh, lemon backwards. The Spellin Berry, which is a Spike Melon, also known as a Kiwano, and the Palm Tree Melon, which just means palm tree, so I have to assume that it's a date. Have you ever had a date? Or date milkshake. They are amazing. The Watmill Berry is the biggest berry. Can you guess what it is? Did you guess yet? The Duran Berry is a durian, and I'm not going to eat one today because I don't even want that thing anywhere near this house. And the Baloo Berry. It's uh, it's another uh. Do you have any idea what it could be? Some of these names are pretty hard. 
Just like these frozen berries. New category, the super effectives. If a Pokemon holding one of these berries is hit by a super effective attack of the corresponding type, they can eat the berry to reduce the damage that they take. Well, okay then. The Oka Berry is a cacao, which tastes nothing like chocolate at all. This is powder, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not. But if a Pokemon eats it, it protects them from fire moves with its spice. Because it's spice, it's fire. The Sasho Berry is a passion fruit that protects from water because passion fruit are just so juicy when ripe anyway. The Wakken Berry protects from electric attacks. It's based on the fruit of the candle tree. Get it? Electricity powers the candle fruit because they're lights and it's shaped like a Christmas light. Yeah, don't worry, I hate it too. The Rindo Berry has a disagreeable green flavor and it's a tamarind, which come in these very, uh, the shells and that's what they look like on the inside. And I do, I have never had one. I don't think I ever will again. This is definitely very disagreeable, like, extremely. It just tastes like sour dirt and grass. So like, it tastes like sour dirt, so like it absorbs the grass attacks because it's dirt. It protects you from grass attacks. Ugh. The Yatch Berry protects against ice, and it is for sure a Cherimoya fruit. That one that I, stinking, absolutely loved because it's related to the one that was actually that. Um. But these things taste absolutely amazing. Um, and apparently in Central America, they make milkshakes out of them constantly because they taste better chilled. I have yet to eat this thing chilled and I am excited to do that later off screen. So you don't get to know what that tastes like unless you follow my Twitter, because I'll tweet about it. Uh, at Loxton, follow me. The Chopalberry, its in-game description says that it contains a substance that generates heat. It can even heat up a chilly heart. That seems better for defending against ice, but whatever. A fighting type works too. I guess it's similar to how you use heat packs and icy hot on bruises and swollen areas. And the fruit also helps heal bruises and swollen areas, so. It's a wax apple, which I could not find, but uh, this, this Gala apple's kinda close. Um, but yeah, they are anti-inflammatory. The Kaiba Berry is based on the Eikaiba, or the chocolate vine. It protects you from poison attacks. Notably, Basically, all of the vines in its family are poisonous to people and pets, but this particular one is an exception. And thus, I guess, it absorbs poison because it's cousins with a poisonous one. So it has space for poison, so that's where the poison goes. I don't know, but I do know that the shuka berry is a cashew. But that is a, is a cashew. Uh, but cashews are actually fruit. Sort of. Apples that are not nearly as widely shipped as the seed is because these apples are super soft and bruise easily and the seed grows on the outside? Odd. But it being here helps protect the extremely delicate apple when it falls off of the tree. Protects it from the ground. There you go. The Koba Berry grants protection from flying type and it's based on the babaco, which is also known as the mountain papaya or the champagne fruit. No idea why it keeps you safe from birds though. Birds are actually known for absolutely devouring these because they love them. And it actually, they love them to the point that they're rare and hard to harvest because birds just keep eating them. Oh, so if your Pokemon is holding it, they can distract the bird that's attacking them and thus they don't get hit as hard. Hmm. The Payapa Berry is also a papaya, it's a relative of it. Uh, it keeps you safe from psychic attacks, and here's an in-game description. This berry is said to sense human emotions for the way it swells roundly when a person approaches. <coughs> I don't like that. But I do like that papayas are really good for brain health in particular. They specifically get f rid of free radicals that wreak havoc on the brain. So they're good for people who are at risk for neurodegenerative disease, and thus it protects you a bit from psychic attacks, I guess. Tonga Berry, its description, the flower grows at the tip of this berry. It attracts bug Pokemon by letting its stringy petals stream out. See, at least this one explains that it just distracts the bugs, protecting the Pokemon from bug attacks. 
It's, it's a pitag pitanga? A pitanga. It's a pitanga. Or a Suriname cherry. Bugs absolutely love them. Chardy berries protect from rock attacks. It's based on the Chinese artichoke, which are very different from the artichokes that I'm used to. And they protect from rocks because uh, they are really hard and found underground? Uh, that's basically it. They are tough as it is, but being underground gives them a resistance to rock, just like ground type Pokemon. Uh, Kasib berries protect you from ghosts. And in Pokemon lore, we have this flavor text. Considered to have a special power from the olden days, this berry sometimes is dried and used as good luck charms. East Asia has all sorts of traditions relating to making charms to keep spirits away, and this berry is based on a citron, specifically the Buddha's hand variety, and yes, charms and jewelry were made out of them to keep spirits away. The Haban berry protects you from dragons, and it's based on the strawberry guava. It makes really good jam, apparently. In Old Hawaii, they were one of the main fruits that they would actually sacrifice to the mo'o, which were dragon spirits. So that works out really well. The Colber Berry keeps you safe from dark type attacks, and it's also not even a berry, it's a weed. It's based on a cockle burr. These terrible things that get stuck in your socks and hurt! They are related to sunflowers though, and contain a seed. So I guess, I guess you could eat them, the inside. The spiky painful things get back at the dark type mon who don't want to get get it stuck to themselves so they hold back a bit while attacking to make sure that they don't get the spikes I, I don't know on this one but i do know that the babiri berry is a fun way to say babiri 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 berry berry babiri berry babiri berry it protects you from steel attacks and it's based on the beriba which is a relative of the sugar apple ah it was used as medicine in the old days, but nothing relating to steel, so I guess that's another game mechanics thing. But the uh, Roselli Berry is based on the Roselle, a species of hibiscus. They make great tea and protect from fairy. My guess is again, it's mainly game mechanics here too. Maybe the fairy mon like it because it's a distracting pretty flower. And lastly, the Chulan Berry, it protects from normal type attacks. It's based on the Chinese lantern fruit, which looks like a Chinese lantern. And its in-game text says, This berry can be cored out and dried to make a whistle. Blowing through its hole makes an indescribable sound. Which I guess is enough to distract normal type Pokemon? Hmm. Well, it's a mainly ornamental plant. Well, I mean, look at how cool it looks. Maybe the normal mon doesn't want to damage such a pretty looking plant. No, that's dumb. Moving on to the final category. Other. The Jaboka Berry is based on the Jabuticaba, a Brazilian fruit that grows on the tree's trunk, which is very strange for a fruit. But then again, the effect of this berry is pretty strange too. If your Pokemon who is holding this berry gets attacked by a physical move, then the attacker gets hurt. Huh. I guess because the berries are held so close, so it's easy to counterattack? Or it's easy to partially miss and hit the hard tree? I don't know. But as far as health goes, they are still being researched, but it's looking good. They're very antioxidant rich and great for managing blood sugar. Compared to most fruit. The Roe-Up Berry is very soft and extremely sour with a hint of spice. It's based on a Java Apple, or a Rose Apple. If your Pokémon holding this berry gets attacked by a special move, then the attacker gets hurt. I still don't really get that. You eating a fruit after being attacked hurts the attacker? Like, if these fruit were poisonous, then it'd be fine, I guess. The attacker accidentally <laughs> eats some, or something. But no. It's quite the opposite. Rose Apples are great for treating fevers and headaches. It makes you feel better. Maybe this is like a Petra Berry kind of situation where it's like literally the opposite. And lastly, for good reason, it's the Enigma Berry. Look, it's literally got a question mark on it. And it's named the Enigma Berry in almost all languages. In Japanese, it's Nazo, meaning riddle or puzzle. Hmm. Well, at least the Not-A-Pickle isn't the only made-up fruit they have. So what does it do? 
Well, in-game it's described this way. A completely enigmatic berry. It apparently has the power of the stars that fill the night sky. Oh! Okay then. What does Bulbapedia say? Oh! It's standing in for an e-reader berry. Oh. The e-reader was an accessory for the Game Boy Advance, and Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire used it for a few little gimmicks, including getting you exclusive berries! These specially unique exclusive berries were based on things like pumpkin, eggplant, garlic, and a carrot! Cause it... Berries! Like, okay, I guess this looks kind of like a berry. Berries! All of these berries would be dropped from existence the following generation, however, but as a failsafe, if you had a Pokémon holding one of these e-reader berries and traded it up to the newer games, the berry would turn into an Enigma berry. A berry that only exists in a different plane of existence, a different dimension of the multiverse. It contains the power of the stars because the stars are where it is from. The vast multiverse of endless possibility. Unquantifiable in its depths. Its alien power is ultra. And so it heals your Pokemon for a quarter of its HP. My blood sugar is probably the highest that it's been since I was in the hospital for it. But fruit is so good. Especially this one, but it is so dang expensive. I'm never going to financially recover from this. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Have anything to add? Any other weird things like this that I should look into? Let me know down below, and until next time, you never stop using your noggin, and don't worry, I'm not wasting any of this fruit. We're gonna eat it! We're having a fruit party!